All of Michigan buzzed with the news of Amber's upcoming marriage to Darren. When word spread that Amber was inviting the prestigious Watson family, many flocked to Greg, hoping to gain favor. Who could have guessed that, for her wedding, Amber didn't even extend an invitation to her own father? Greg's eyes widened in surprise as he caught sight of the invitation in Amber's grasp, but he quickly looked away. Amber, it's been a while, Shannon said with a smile, though her eyes betrayed a deep-seated animosity toward Amber. As Amber entered the Watson residence, her expression turned frosty. She glanced at Greg and continued on her path. Why the cold shoulder, Amber? Shannon questioned, visibly upset. She stepped in front of Amber, stating, Regardless of our differences, we're still family. You might despise me, but he's still your father. You're getting married. It's a monumental step. Why wouldn't you involve your own father? Her words hinted at an attempt to agitate Greg. Amber shot Greg a disdainful look, quipping sarcastically, Is he really? In her eyes, he had forfeited the right to be called her father. Listen here, Shannon snapped. Her voice held a mocking tone. Now that you've got Darren wrapped around your finger and with the title of Mrs. Fleming soon to be yours, I bet you feel you're too good for your own father. With the decline of the Brooks business, you're probably eager to distance yourself from it. Why would you want your father and the baggage of the Brooks name to weigh you down, right? Her ridicule was palpable, but she seemed too exasperated to continue the spat. Amber brushed past Shannon as her face clouded with anger. She then paused and turned slightly to fix her gaze on the visibly upset Greg. None of you are worthy, she declared. Neither Shannon, Lori, nor Greg met her standards, and for that reason, he wouldn't be receiving an invitation to her wedding. Amber, Shannon's voice quivered, clearly taken aback by Amber's words. She tried to respond, but Greg interjected sharply, enough, just leave. His swift exit left a lingering tension in the Watson estate. Amber hesitated for a moment. The sound of receding footsteps drew her attention. She glanced back, catching the sight of Greg's retreating silhouette. She was well aware of the situation with the Brooks family. On the brink of financial ruin, they were merely clinging to survival. The weight of it all had visibly taken its toll on Greg, and he had stopped reaching out to Amber. Observing him now, she couldn't help but notice the pronounced curve in his spine, a clear sign of age and weariness. Amber made her way into the main hall, guided by the servant of the Watson residence. Upon entering, she found Mason and Mia deeply engrossed in a heated discussion. The ongoing relationship between Carlos and Stella was a source of consternation for the pair. This topic had been broached earlier when Greg and Shannon had visited. Just six months into his daughter's marriage into the Watson family, Carlos had been implicated in an affair with a relative of Lori. Such an indiscretion was a mark of disgrace for both the Watson and Brooks families. David had rebuked Carlos, urging him to end his external liaisons. Carlos, however, felt an unwavering commitment to Stella. David found himself powerless in managing him, much like he couldn't rein in his son's philandering habits. Despite this, David had made plans to redistribute the family's assets and shares. Mason and Mia fretted that David would favor another branch of the family due to Carlos's actions. Although Lori wasn't particularly assertive, the Gellers still held some sway. After all, even a weakened giant can prove formidable. The Watsons, meanwhile, were overly reliant on Greg's influence. Therefore, Carlos's potential divorce or remarriage to Stella was out of the question for them. See the mess your son has created? Mason shouted at Mia. Mia shot back sarcastically. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Hasn't Carlos just emulated your ways of taking up lovers? It was common knowledge that Mason's own mistress was significantly younger than Carlos. Mia had to safeguard her own status and had long grown indifferent to his infidelities, choosing instead to overlook them. Always stirring the pot for no reason, Mason retorted. Mia's frustration was palpable. Am I wrong? She snapped. If dad decides to give control to the others over this mess, you'll regret it. And when that day comes, don't expect any sympathy from me, Mason warned. Carlos's recent choices had profoundly disappointed David. 
When Greg and Shannon paid a visit earlier in the day, David had sought Carlos's stance on the matter. Carlos tried to assure Greg that he had no plans of divorcing, but after considering all the perspectives, Carlos felt that if he were intimate with Stella, he owed her a commitment. David listened to everything but chose to remain silent, later expressing only a desire to retreat to his chambers for some rest. If he truly had Carlos's best interests at heart, he would have undoubtedly scolded him. Mia lashed out at Mason, if you hadn't been so concerned about Amber and the family back then, we wouldn't be in this mess with Carlos now. As their disagreement escalated, both Mason and Mia noticed Amber standing in the living room, making the atmosphere even more tense. The couple deeply regretted their choice of Lori as their daughter-in-law. Since her arrival at the Watson mansion, she had been a consistent source of turmoil. Carlos's liaison with Stella added fuel to the fire, enraging Lori even further. In her fury, she had damaged countless family possessions as well. Had Amber been the one to marry into the Watsons, they felt things would have been different. Amber's demeanor was far more subdued compared to Lori's volatile nature. They believed that Amber would have been more tolerant. However, Amber's internal thoughts told a different story. In her mind, if her spouse ever cheated, she wouldn't resort to wrecking the house. Instead, she'd make him pay, literally. She envisioned selling his most prized possessions. She silently thanked her stars that Carlos had shown his true colors early on. If they had wed, she feared he'd continually break her heart, maybe even drive her to an early grave because of stress. Amber, what brings you here? Mia was the first to regain her composure, approaching Amber with a friendly demeanor. She attempted to take Amber's hand in a show of warmth, but Amber smoothly avoided the gesture, keeping her hand by her side. I saw Carlos in the living room earlier. Thought you might be here for him, Mia said, assuming Amber's presence was connected to him. Amber simply arched an eyebrow, amused by Mia's confidence in Carlos. Noticing Amber's skeptical expression, Mia quickly added, Amber, someone must have set Carlos up with Stella. That's the only explanation. She seemed to believe that Carlos's encounter with Stella was influenced by some drug or intoxication. Actually, I'm here for grandfather, Amber clarified, extracting an invitation from her purse. Is he around, she asked. Upon seeing the invitation, a smile broke out on Mia's face. Mason, intrigued by the conversation, approached the two women. So when's the big day with Mr. Darren, he inquired, realizing the importance of staying on good terms with her. Given Darren's swift and decisive action against the Geller family, which had effectively removed them from Michigan's top five influential families, the other major families were more cautious around him. On New Year's Day, Amber replied, her voice soft yet confident. Is grandfather here? She repeated her earlier question. Just as Mia and Mason were about to respond, David began descending the staircase. He had been alerted to Amber's arrival by a servant. Seeing Amber, his face lit up. Amber, it's been too long, he warmly greeted her. She smiled. The last time we met was at your birthday party. But now, she continued, holding up the wedding invitation, I thought it right to personally invite you to my wedding with Darren. David accepted the invitation, his face breaking into a broad smile after a quick perusal. Wonderful news. I wouldn't miss it for the world, he declared. Casting a glance at Mason and Mia, he then said to Amber, How about a walk in the garden? She agreed, of course, offering her arm as they headed towards the lush garden. David and Thomas belonged to the same generation, making Amber, in essence, a grandchild of the Watson family lineage as well. Despite the noticeable age gap between Darren and Amber, David believed what mattered most was her well-being. Carlos, on the other hand? David heaved a heavy sigh, thinking about his wayward grandson. Grandfather, something's on your mind? Amber inquired gently. She had a hunch about the reason behind David's pensive mood. If Carlos had been her own grandson, she too would have been beside herself with frustration. Carlos was already wedded to Lori, yet he saw an opportunity with Stella, who was under a certain influence and took advantage. And then he had the audacity to claim Darren had set him up. If Stella truly couldn't resist temptation, 
she would have been helpless. Amber felt a strong disdain for infidelity. In her eyes, a man who couldn't stay faithful was the epitome of poor character. David remained silent, his gaze fixed on a scene unfolding nearby. Amber followed his line of sight. Lori was desperately trying to stop Carlos, who seemed ready to head out with his phone in hand. Carlos, where are you headed? Lori's voice held a note of desperation as she raced to intercept him. Is Stella the reason you're leaving? She asked. Carlos shot her a look of clear annoyance, evidently exasperated by her constant confrontations. At first, he hadn't been smitten with Stella. However, after spending more time together, he began to feel a deeper connection. He had a soft spot for compliant women. He had believed Lori to be docile, but her facade soon fell away, revealing her true colors. So Carlos chose Stella. I've already assured your parents I won't divorce you. What more do you want? His tone was frosty. It was his final plea. He was adamant about not divorcing Lori, at least for now. Just staying married is enough for you? Lori's voice rose in frustration as she clutched at his shirt. I won't stand by while you chase after Stella. Carlos, you are my husband. He retorted with a derisive laugh. Stella is already with me. Do you expect me to shirk my responsibility? Am I supposed to just abandon her? Lori, you're being incredibly self-centered. His words were biting. Amber watched the drama from the sidelines and couldn't help but smirk. Who had Carlos ever been truly accountable to? For him to label Lori as selfish was the height of irony. Was he not trying to play both sides? She wondered. Amber's respect for Carlos diminished as she saw him fighting with Lori. Carlos! Lori's voice rang out with fury. I don't care what you think. You can't keep seeing Stella. You're calling me selfish? I am being selfless by letting you be with Stella. The name next to yours on our marriage license is mine, she shouted in frustration. Carlos fixed a piercing gaze on Lori, responding coldly. Lori, let go. He smirked derisively. Weren't you the one who tried setting me up with Stella? Why else would I have been with her if not for your schemes to pair her with Darren, hoping she'd be taken in by the Fleming family? Lori fell silent, realizing the weight of his words. She had orchestrated the entire situation, however. The whole plot boomeranged. Instead of sidelining Amber, she ended up becoming the forsaken wife. You claim you didn't drug Stella, yet she was drugged and I unintentionally became her savior, he pointed out. Amber cringed at his choice of words. It wasn't me! Lori fired back defensively. I didn't tamper Stella's drink. Her denials fell on deaf ears as he remained unconvinced. Enough of this! He snapped, forcefully removing Lori's hand from him. But in desperation, she clung to him and gripped his shirt. Carlos, please, she implored as tears streamed down her face. Don't leave me. I admit my mistakes. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me just this once? She asked. Aware that Stella and Carlos had become close, she had returned to the Watson residence in a fit of rage. Yet, he seemed impervious to all her attempts to sway him, as if he was under some spell. He adamantly claimed that he couldn't betray Stella. He asserted he wouldn't seek a divorce, and he couldn't turn his back on Stella either. Carlos's stubbornness was something even David found too much to handle. Neither Greg nor Shannon could influence him. Lori, let go. Carlos remained unmoved by Lori's tears. With a forceful push, off balance from her high heels, she tumbled to the ground. He cast a cold, disinterested glance at the distraught Lori and decisively turned away. Now on the floor, Lori wept uncontrollably. She recalled how he once had eyes for Amber, though Amber never reciprocated his feelings. Stella, who once claimed to be enamored with Darren, swiftly shifted her affections to Carlos after just one night. Their budding relationship made Lori feel like a third wheel. Witnessing this, both Amber and David were visibly upset. Amber's heart ached for Lori, finding her somewhat pitiable in that moment. Yet, Lori had brought much of this upon herself. If she hadn't perceived Amber as a rival and aided Stella in driving a wedge between her and Darren, the subsequent events wouldn't have transpired. Carlos wouldn't have found out about Darren's lunch with the Jordans, 
and that night with Stella would have never occurred. In essence, Lori was now facing the consequences of her own actions. Amber, it's a blessing you didn't end up with Carlos, David remarked with a sigh. The entire spectacle only deepened his disappointment in Carlos. Amber nodded in agreement. Indeed, grandfather. A man like Carlos, who betrayed her trust with Lori, would surely do the same to Lori with someone else someday. Carlos was inherently self-centered and always prioritized his own desires. David was concerned and advised, steer clear of Carlos or he might hurt you. His genuine concern warmed Amber's heart. Don't worry, grandfather. I'm in a good place now, she assured, her face brightened with a smile. Darren might be older, but he's nurturing, David continued. The best part is, he's wholly committed to me, Amber chimed in, finishing his thought with a genuine smile. Carlos simply couldn't hold a candle to that. David nodded, taking in the view before him. A moment of contemplation passed before he gently said to Amber, Amber, if a day comes when I'm no longer here. His voice softened, tinged with melancholy. Please take care of things here, he completed. She was taken aback. The gravity of the old man's words made her uneasy. Grandfather, the Watson family will be fine, she tried to reassure him. David, having been a guiding force for so long, had a clear perspective. Over the years, he held sway over the Watson family, yet he hadn't identified a successor for the family. It wasn't that his two sons were unsuitable. Rather, there were no standout candidates. He once believed Carlos was the answer. But Carlos's true character revealed itself with time, proving to be even more problematic than Mason's. Reflecting on his legacy and the family's trajectory, David said, In time, I believe the Watson family will face challenges. Part of my decision to embrace you as my adoptive granddaughter was to have you keep an eye on the family for me, he admitted. David had always thought of Amber as her granddaughter and had legalized things in his heart. Amber playfully replied, When you took me in, you didn't even know I'd marry Darren. Don't fret. If need be, Darren will watch over the Watson family. David seemed reassured by her words. The Watson family had reached its zenith, being one of the five prominent families in Michigan. He recognized that sustaining such a position was improbable. What goes up must come down. The conversation between Amber and David concluded. She escorted him back to the main house. Her stay with the Watson family was brief. Aside from David, Amber had no interest in engaging with the rest of the family. As she stepped out of the family's main house, she was taken aback to see a familiar man waiting by the entrance. Greg, had he been waiting for her? She didn't approach him, instead heading towards the Fleming family's car. Amber, can we talk? He asked. Amber's immediate impulse was to decline. She had no desire to converse with him. I don't have the time, she replied coolly. Hadn't he hurt her enough? She thought. If it weren't for Greg, she'd have been handed over to the Geller family where she might have met her end. She couldn't recognize such a man as her father. Amber, his voice took on a chilly tone. Meeting her icy gaze, he said calmly, I wasn't the one who tried sending you to the Geller family. What's the difference? She shot back sarcastically. Wasn't it your wish to send me away? On what grounds do you think you have the right to speak to me? You traded me for your benefits. Our father-daughter bond was long severed, she said, with her voice dripping with bitterness. But let's be clear. We stopped being family a long time ago. It was evident every time Shannon and Lori targeted her and Greg turned a blind eye. He had pampered Lori endlessly while treating Amber as if she were invisible. He had even tried to force Amber into a marriage with the Fleming family for Lori's benefit. Their father-daughter bond had been broken a long time ago. Amber, he sounded almost desperate. Please, just a moment of your time. His voice softened to the point where Amber thought she detected a hint of pleading. As she turned back, she noticed the graying hair at his temples. I have something of your mother's. I'd like to give it to you, he said. Mother? After a moment's thought, she finally said, Fine, we'll need to go to the Brooks residence, he said, managing a small smile. Amber traveled in the Fleming family's car to the Brooks residence, 
aware of Greg's history with the Geller family. Regardless of how he had treated her in the past, she knew he would always be cautious about Darren's presence in her life and wouldn't harm her. Upon arriving at the Brooks estate, she didn't spot Shannon. She trailed Greg up the grand staircase. Instead of leading her to a study or any of the familiar rooms, Greg took her to a seldom used room. Amber was aware that only a select few, including Greg and some house staff, had keys to this room. Even Shannon had never been inside. This room held special significance for Amber. It was where her mother, Maya, had resided. After Maya's death, he had relocated to another room, seeking distance from her. Afterward, Greg had locked the room, keeping it untouched and preserved. When Greg unlocked the door, Amber's curiosity got the best of her. She stepped in eagerly, keen to experience her mother's space. The room was surprisingly well-maintained and lacked any layer of dust one might expect from years of neglect. Upon entering, she was embraced by a familiar warmth. The room was infused with her mother's essence, and her distinct fragrance lingered in the air. Her eyes were drawn to the photos displayed on a table by the window. Among them, she was elated to find a picture of herself. There were also photographs of her sister as a child. Yet, in all these captured moments, Greg's presence was conspicuously absent. Amber surveyed the room. Her gaze lingered on a photograph of her mother with a beaming smile. She couldn't help but think that if her mother was still around, she'd be showering love upon her. Mom, I'm getting married, Amber whispered affectionately to the photograph of Maya. While she had discovered a photo of her mother in Greg's study before, this was a different one. Lost in thought, she discreetly slipped the picture into her bag. Greg noticed her action and chose not to intervene. Instead, he retrieved a box from a nearby cabinet. Amber, he said, offering her the box. Puzzled, Amber took it from him. Upon opening the lid, her eyes widened at the sight of a stunning jewelry set. The necklace, bracelet, and earrings, all adorned with precious gems, clearly held significant value. With their worth, these pieces could undoubtedly fetch a considerable sum at auction, potentially alleviating financial strain if needed. But Greg clarified, this belonged to your mother. Maya hailed from an affluent background. When she had chosen to leave her home, she had taken nothing with her except this jewelry set. Not because of its monetary value, but for its sentimental significance. Upon her birth, Maya's family had custom commissioned this set for her, a tradition for the women in her family. Greg never had the means to commission such lavish pieces for either Amber or himself. He had once intended this set for Suzanne while anticipating her marriage. However, unforeseen events from seven years prior had derailed those plans. Now that you're getting married, it's right that you have this, he said softly. Realizing the jewelry's origins, Amber gratefully accepted it, cradling the pieces in her hands. It was comforting to possess something that once belonged to her mother. Thank you, she told Greg as she smiled sincerely. For the first time since their reunion, she truly saw him and acknowledged his gesture. Greg was taken aback by Amber's genuine smile. At that moment, her resemblance to Maya was uncanny, even more striking than he remembered. How's life treating you at the Fleming house? He inquired suddenly. Caught off guard, Amber stared at him. It was the first sign of genuine concern he had shown towards her in a long time. Was his unexpected warmth a result of her recent debacle with the Geller family? She wondered. She'd grown wary of him over the years, so his sudden kindness felt out of place. Well, Darren's been great to me, she answered honestly. My mom and dad treat me well too. She stressed the words mom and dad intentionally, subtly conveying that Greg was no longer regarded as her father in her eyes. I see, Greg responded. His voice was flat. He seemed like he wanted to continue the conversation, but the words eluded him and soon silence took over. Amber did not want to linger any longer and began to leave. Cradling the jewelry box, she unexpectedly ran into Shannon in the hallway. Shannon's keen eyes immediately caught sight of the box. Amber, 
What have you taken? She asked. Without waiting for a response, she reached out to snatch the box. Amber reacted swiftly and stepped away, clutching it tightly. Hasn't your interference caused our family enough harm? What more could you possibly want from us? Shannon accused her. Being well-versed in jewelry, she instantly recognized the value of what Amber held. She jumped to the conclusion that Amber must have stolen it from the Brooks estate. This belonged to my mother. Amber defended herself in an icy tone. She held Shannon's gaze unwaveringly. The revelation that the jewelry once belonged to Maya left Shannon momentarily speechless. Shannon peered past Amber into the room Greg had kept locked for two decades. Your mother's? She scoffed. You really think Maya had jewelry this expensive? I took this from the Geller estate myself, she declared with conviction. In her mind, there was no way Maya could have owned such expensive pieces. When Lori had wed, not even a sliver of the Brooks estate was given to her. Give it back, Shannon commanded in a firm voice. Amber fixed a frosty gaze on her and retorted, You truly have no shame, Shannon. In Amber's view, Shannon was ready to claim anything and everything. She'd already taken her family, and now she wanted her jewelry, too. You little brat, how dare you speak to me that way? Furious, Shannon lifted a hand to strike Amber, but paused when she met Amber's defiant stare. Go ahead, hit me, but make sure my face is bruised enough for Darren to see, Amber taunted. Mentioning Darren shifted the dynamic. Shannon hesitated, fully aware that any harm to Amber would not go unnoticed by Darren. Despite past relations with the Geller family, Darren had proved his loyalty to Amber. Shannon knew that attacking Amber would make him enraged. Reluctantly, she lowered her hand but maintained her glare. I got this jewelry from the Geller estate, she reiterated. How could Maya have ever afforded such lavish pieces? If you're insinuating that my mother's family wasn't influential enough, think again. Just because she wasn't treated fairly by grandmother doesn't mean she came from nothing, Amber shot back. Shannon was undeterred and tried to reach again for the jewelry. Return it, Amber. You're with Darren now, isn't that enough for you? She said disdainfully. Amber's face drained of color, but her resolve was strong. I'll say it once more, this jewelry belonged to my mother. Do you really think every precious item on this planet belongs to the Geller estate? and that my mother had no right to own anything of value? She couldn't stand those who belittled her mother, especially when it was Shannon doing the belittling. Well, not all treasures are Geller's, Shannon retorted, but they sure as hell weren't Maya's. She was just an ordinary woman, nowhere near my status. Shannon's irritation surged at the mere mention of Maya. She lunged forward, outstretched her hand, and aimed to seize the box that Amber was clutching tightly. Just as her fingers brushed the box's surface, Greg's voice, charged with anger, echoed, What do you think you are doing? She pivoted to find Greg, standing imposingly at Maya's room entrance with his gaze icy. Hubby, Shannon greeted him, masking her surprise with a forced smile. Amber, head out, Greg advised, pointedly overlooking Shannon. But Amber hesitated, locking eyes with Greg. These belong to my mother, correct? She asked. Shannon's attention also snapped to Greg, awaiting his response. Yes, Maya left them behind, he confirmed. Shannon's disbelief was palpable. How could Maya have owned jewelry of this caliber? She hesitated and then prodded, Did you purchase them for her? She quickly doubted herself. While the Brooks family was financially comfortable during Maya's time, they couldn't have possibly afforded such luxurious items. Shannon recognized the top-tier diamonds embellishing the necklace. Maya brought them herself, Greg asserted, still staring at Shannon. Or did you hope to claim her remaining treasures for yourself? He taunted. Shannon's face flushed in humiliation under Greg's withering scrutiny. Desperation tinted her voice. Hubby, if we sell these jewels, they could pull the brooks out of jeopardy, she said. They belonged to Maya. They're not yours to command. Greg's tone was definitive. Amber's shock registered plainly. It seemed Shannon had designs on every vestige of her mother's legacy. Amber, while you may not have entreated Darren to bail out the Brooks, remember that what belonged to your mother now belongs to your father. You have no right to them, Shannon fired back with apparent desperation. Greg's face darkened. Enough, 
he growled. Amber, go! Amber spared Shannon one final icy glance before walking out. Hubby, what's your point? Shannon demanded. Her eyes were blazing with fury as she watched Amber depart the Brooks residence with a jewelry box in her hand. Why did you let her leave with something that belongs to the Brooks? Do you still harbor feelings for Maya after all these years, since you kept all her possessions hidden away? She asked. It isn't about holding on to past feelings, Greg said. His shadowed face broke into a sardonic smile. In truth, Maya had always occupied a unique place in his heart. Even though he had wronged her in unimaginable ways, leading to her untimely end, his love for her had remained undiminished. Hobby! Shannon's voice crackled with rage. How can you still love Maya after she humiliated you? A dark, chilling glint took over Greg's eyes. If you want to give away the jewelry, it should go to Lori. Amber isn't even your daughter, Shannon spat, emphasizing what she believed to be an indisputable truth. Hearing this, Greg's reaction was immediate and fierce, landing a stinging slap across her cheek. Enough, he shouted. Shannon was in disbelief. In her earlier days, she was considered above everything in the Geller family, but Greg had a tinge of indifference when he looked at her. Why can't you forget her? I've loved you unconditionally, she raged, tears pooling in her eyes. Why do you remain fixated on Maya? especially after her betrayal. How can you overlook the fact that Amber is the outcome of Maya's affair? For 20 years, you've raised another man's child, and now you've even given away our family heirloom to her. You're spineless, Greg. Despite your undying love for Maya, she never truly valued you. Her words cut deep, and Greg, with uncontrolled fury, struck her again. It was his betrayal that had driven Maya to seek solace elsewhere resulting in Amber's birth. He had once begged her for forgiveness, for a second chance. But the damage was irreparable, and Maya's love for him had been forever extinguished. Greg's fists trembled with suppressed fury. Unable to contain his anger any longer, he slammed his hand into the wall with a force that drew blood. Shannon was still crying from his prior outburst. She watched him in horror from a short distance as her gaze got fixated on his bleeding hand. Meanwhile, Amber made her way out of the Brooks residence. She paused for a moment just outside the front gates, taking one final look at the home she once knew. It was unlikely she'd ever return. With both her mother and sister gone, there was nothing left for her there. Goodbye, family, she murmured under her breath. She was just about to climb into her car when another car horn grabbed her attention. Looking over, she recognized the sleek black sedan that pulled up beside her. It was Darren's. Her face lit up with a smile as Darren emerged from the driver's seat. Hey, why are you here? She greeted him, reaching out to take his hand. Just thought I'd pick you up. He replied smoothly, pulling her into a gentle embrace before guiding her to the passenger door of his car. She chuckled, fully aware that he had come to ensure she wouldn't linger much here. As they began to pull away, Amber took one last look at the Brooks' home, fading in the distance. I don't think I'll be coming back here again, she said. I know, he responded. Do you think I went too far? Not inviting my own father to our wedding, she asked. You did what you felt was right, he reassured her, giving her hand a comforting squeeze. The most important thing is your happiness. Amber beamed at him, grateful for his unwavering support. It was clear that in Darren's world, she came first, always. Everyone in Michigan was buzzing about Darren and Amber's upcoming lavish wedding. Darren took the initiative to take Amber to a banquet celebrating their marriage. As part of the evening's festivities, he took to the stage for a speech. In the middle of his remarks, under the glaring lights and media cameras, he announced their plans to wed on New Year's Day. I'm ecstatic. I found my life partner, he beamed, emphasizing his love for her more than any other detail of his speech. I deeply love my soon-to-be wife. Upon hearing his heartfelt words, Amber's face lit up with an unmistakable smile, radiating pure joy. I vow to give my all, to offer Amber everything, and to stand by her side and protect her for the rest of our lives. His declaration of love and their evident happiness was broadcasted throughout Michigan. 
Anyone watching could clearly see the genuine affection he felt for her. Overwhelmed with happiness, Amber gazed fondly at Darren from her seat, her smile caught on camera for all to see. In a more private setting, Suzanne, watching the event on TV from her bed, smiled too, warmed by Amber's evident joy. I'm glad she's found happiness, she thought, turning off the television and sitting up. Maya had once advised her, don't be as headstrong as me. Suzanne was undeniably tenacious, particularly when it came to matters of the heart. Once she set her heart on someone, she pursued that affection fearlessly, even if obstacles or dangers lay in her path. How else could she have remained so committed, so consumed by a single love for seven long years? In many ways, Suzanne and Maya were cut from the same cloth, both fiercely independent in their decisions about love. Even after Greg's betrayal, whether he was seduced into Shannon's grasp or whether he still harbored feelings for Maya, Maya would never again open her heart to him, which was why, the previous night, when Robert approached her with clear intentions, Suzanne had posed a question. Have you been with her? Both knew exactly whom Suzanne was referring to. After that, no more words were spoken and silence prevailed. Robert stepped out of the shower and his gaze was immediately drawn to Suzanne. She was lying bare on the floor. With a frown, he limped over and gently draped his shirt over her. Suzanne was, in many ways, a vision of perfection. She was intelligent, strikingly beautiful, and had a figure many envied. As she shifted, her fair skin was exposed to Robert's eyes. Noticing the marks on her face, he realized he had been rather forceful with her the previous night. Get dressed, he murmured, reaching out to button up the shirt he had placed on her. He had been so rough the previous evening that her own clothes were ruined. In the absence of a better option, he offered her his shirt. What's the problem with my current dress? Suzanne retorted playfully, a hint of mischief in her eyes. Saves us the trouble. Robert responded with a chilly laugh. You shouldn't have tried to leave. Just a day ago, Suzanne had made an attempt to escape, hinting at her desire to be free from him. In her mind, her departure wasn't an act of defiance. Given the palpable animosity Robert felt towards her, she didn't see a reason to stick around. Plus, with Amber getting married, she wanted to be present for her sister's big day. She had barely made it out of Robert's secluded villa, which was situated halfway up a hillside, when he caught up with her in his car. He was infuriated with her and pulled her in towards himself. Back then, Robert had been tender, almost shy. It was a stark contrast to his current demeanor. He held her hand tightly and didn't let her go away. Inside the car, Suzanne found herself overwhelmed by Robert's intensity. I need to be at Amber's wedding, she said, meeting his eyes. Robert finished buttoning her shirt, noting its loose fit on her slender frame. She had lost weight, and he wondered if it was due to mistreatment from another man. The very idea of Suzanne being with someone else darkened his mood further. You'll have your clothes soon. Wear these for now, he said with a hint of indifference. Her clothes had gotten dirty from all the climbing she had done earlier, and unfortunately, she wasn't carrying anything with her. I only have one sister, Amber, Suzanne repeated, trying to emphasize her need to attend the wedding. Robert had a possessive grip on Suzanne. Now that she was back in his life, he couldn't bear the thought of letting her out of his sight. Suzanne, you can't just slip away, he said. Why would I? She responded, thinking about her previous attempt to leave temporarily. I just want to attend Amber's wedding. Robert studied her with a cold gaze, his fingers reaching for her face. She flinched, pulling away. She didn't want his touch but her resistance only seemed to intrigue him more. He gripped her face, forcing her to meet his eyes. Pain welled up in Suzanne's heart, but she masked it with a defiant smile. Robert, don't be so callous. I might just pay you back in kind. He looked taken aback, and his grip loosened. After their intense encounter in the car, Suzanne seemed different and unpredictable. Her smile widened, hinting at a touch of madness. Maybe I've lost my mind. Robert smirked in response. 
join the club. He believed that without her, he'd go mad, and if he found her entangled with another man, it might push him over the edge. You should count yourself lucky that I didn't find you here with another man, he said with a cold chuckle, suddenly pulling her close. You want me to stay, but for how long? Suzanne asked, a sardonic smile playing on her lips. She recalled their initial confrontation in this very room. Robert had mentioned that he held the Brooks family responsible for his condition and sought vengeance. His expression shifted to one of intensity. Without uttering a word, he leaned down, capturing her lips with his own. For years, they both had dreamt of this of feeling each other close to each other. It was a dangerous cocktail of love and resentment. After all this time, you owe me, he murmured, brushing his fingers against her face after their kiss. She did owe him. She'd broken their rendezvous, and as a result, he'd suffered a severe injury at the hands of Greg. Suzanne's heart ached at the memory, but her tears remained at bay. Instead, a sly smile tugged at her lips. Then take your revenge! she challenged. When I'm truly yours, don't leave me. That pain will be unbearable. The words cut through Robert. The Suzanne before him wasn't the same woman he remembered. She was tougher, more resilient, yet still deeply passionate. Robert, she said, her gaze intense. Never forget that I love you completely and irrevocably. I'm drawn to you, knowing full well that you could be my undoing. She completed her sentence. On the other hand, Amber and Darren's love was so radiant that it was the stuff of envy. Their wedding day was fast approaching. Amber wanted no association with the Brooks family legacy and chose to marry outside of it. David, recognizing her as his granddaughter, welcomed her into the Watson family. Darren trailed behind Amber, who couldn't resist a playful jibe. Most husbands would be wary of their wives staying at an ex's place, but you? You trust me that much? She asked. His response dripped with disdain. Is he even worth the concern? Carlos had been the fiancé chosen by Amber's family, not a lover she'd chosen for herself. Amber chuckled, full of self-assuredness. She wasn't concerned about a man like Carlos, especially since he was now preoccupied with Stella and Lori. He had little time to concern himself with her. After talking it over with Darren, Amber decided to have their wedding at the Watson estate. Yet it wouldn't be at the old Watson residence, but rather at David's upscale villa. Traditionally, the bride and groom weren't supposed to see each other the day before the wedding, building anticipation for their reunion at the altar. Darren, used to having Amber by his side every night, felt an emptiness without her. Once back at the Fleming residence, and without Amber in sight, he felt adrift. He tried to distract himself by lounging on the couch with a cigarette, but his mind kept drifting away. Uncle Will noticed Darren's restless state and quipped, It's only been a day apart from her and you're already this anxious. Darren shot Uncle Will a look, but didn't dispute the claim. In a few short months, he and Amber had grown incredibly close, cherishing each other above all else. He'd grown to love every aspect of her, embracing both her virtues and flaws. Yes, he admitted as he took another drag from his cigarette. I just want tomorrow to come. Having navigated many challenges to lead the Fleming Empire to its current success, Darren was no stranger to pressure. Yet, compared to all his past trials, the anticipation of the wedding made him the most anxious. After finishing his cigarette, he pulled out his phone and smiled at a new message from Amber. Hubby, I miss you. Her candid words made his heart race. He longed to hold her close. Amber, get some rest, he replied. No, came her quick response. I'm too excited for tomorrow. He glanced at the smiling emoji Amber sent him on their messaging app. Hold on, I'm about to make this official, he said as he dialed her number. On the other end, Amber didn't immediately pick up. Just as he was about to redial, wondering if something had gone wrong, her call came through. Hey there. The warmth in Amber's voice resonated deep within Darren, painting a vivid image of her soft expression as she spoke. I can't seem to fall asleep, she admitted. He chuckled softly. You're not alone in that. Stay calm, he reassured her. Tomorrow, you'll see me. She paused for a moment, 
absorbing the sound of his steady breaths on the other end of the line. The thought of being his bride the next day made her heart flutter with joy. Why do I feel so overjoyed right now? She mused. You'll always be filled with joy, he promised. But if you don't get some rest now, you might be too tired to look radiant for our big day. She sighed. Okay, but promise me you'll come early tomorrow. Her unabashed eagerness made him smile. She wore her heart on her sleeve, and it was one of the many things he loved about her. Hearing the call end, he chuckled to himself, amused at how quickly she'd hung up. As he began heading upstairs to rest, his phone buzzed with another incoming call. Assuming it was Amber again, he answered playfully, Couldn't resist, could you? Darren. The voice wasn't Amber's, catching him off guard. A familiar feminine voice said, Darren, it's me. I'm back. Recognition slowly dawned on him. Without responding, he promptly ended the call. It was Isabella. Darren's mind raced back to a conversation they had. With his wedding scheduled for tomorrow, and now Isabella suddenly announcing her return, he couldn't help but wonder if someone was trying to sabotage the ceremony. Quickly, he dialed Matt's number to discuss the matter. Meanwhile, in preparation for the big day, Isabella, with funds provided by Julie, picked out a pink dress from a boutique. The color had always complemented her fair complexion, and Darren had once mentioned she looked her best in it. She admired her reflection, adjusting her dress when Julie walked in with some of his associates. Planning on wearing that to Darren's wedding, are you? She taunted Isabella. Hope to make such an impression that Darren ditches Amber at the altar for you? Isabella stiffened, realizing Julie had hit close to home. She had indeed intended to wear her striking black dress to the wedding, hoping to remind Darren of their past and pull him back to her side. Julie scoffed. You're giving yourself too much credit. She motioned towards the mirror. Take a good look. You might have been a beauty once, but Amber, she's on another level. Isabella's heart sank. She'd seen Amber both in photographs and in person. Yes, Amber was undeniably gorgeous, radiating an energy that drew people to her. But Darren's heart belongs to me, Isabella retorted, trying to sound confident. He and I have a history that Amber can never match. Julie laughed, acknowledging the point she made. True, you need to play on that connection. Make Darren feel sorry for letting you go, she continued, suggesting that the men of the Fleming family, once they committed, were known to be fiercely loyal. To them, any other woman would pale in comparison. This trait had been evident in many of the family members, like Thomas. Isabella gazed at her reflection and felt a mix of hope and desperation. He does love me, she whispered defiantly. With a smirk, Julie handed her phone. Well, his wedding's tomorrow. As his ex, perhaps you should call and wish him well. And that's when Isabella called Darren and finally connected with him. After Isabella's return, she had only reached out to Darren once. She was haunted by her current self and hesitant to face him. Holding her phone, she dialed his number, praying she wouldn't hear Amber's voice on the other end. To her relief, it was Darren who had answered. Overwhelmed with emotion, tears streamed down her face. Darren, it's me, Isabella. I'm back, she said, her voice quivering with excitement. There was a moment of silence before the line went dead. Beside her, Julie watched her reaction with a mocking smile. Men can be fickle, she remarked. Amber is both young and stunning. Who wouldn't choose her? She said sarcastically. I wouldn't, Isabella replied defiantly, shaking her head. Bind her, Julie suddenly ordered. His associates moved swiftly, approaching Isabella and restraining her, much to her alarm. What are you planning now? Isabella cried out, panic evident in her voice. Memories from a decade ago, when Julie had abducted her and traded her to others, flashed through her mind. Don't fret, Julie reassured her with a twisted smile. I won't send you away until you've successfully separated Darren from Amber. She continued. Tomorrow is Darren and Amber's grand wedding. The Geller family should present a significant gift to acknowledge Darren's recent efforts. A dark glint appeared in his eyes, hinting at something malicious. 
News of Darren and Amber's impending wedding had taken Michigan by storm. Everywhere one looked, from hotels and shopping centers to entertainment spots under the Fleming banner, grand events were being hosted in celebration of the big day. The next morning, Amber was up with the sun. The makeup artist, booked by the Watson family, arrived early. Her wedding gown, tailor-made in Paris to fit her perfectly and suit her taste, awaited her. Amber patiently sat as the makeup artist worked her magic. An hour later, the reflection staring back at her was breathtaking, leaving everyone in the room in awe. Lucky Mr. Darren, someone murmured. Over time, Amber had heard the whispers and speculations about her inevitably tying the knot with Darren. However, in her eyes, Darren was equally fortunate. After all, she was younger, playful, affectionate, and knew just how to charm her significant other. By midday, Darren arrived to greet Amber. Accompanying her was a bridesmaid, a young member of the Fleming family, Darren's niece, Effortlessly sidestepping the playful tease from the bridesmaid, Darren presented Amber with flowers. Today, his smile seemed brighter than ever. It was evident to all how smitten he was. Driven by his sheer love and excitement, he'd woken up at the crack of dawn, rallying his friends Matt and Harry to head over to the Watson residence. Upon setting eyes on Amber, he rushed over, pulling her into a tight embrace. Amber, I've missed you so much, he whispered. The gathered crowd cheered, urging the groom to seal the moment with a kiss. Darren gazed into Amber's eyes with evident love, and she wrapped her arms around him as their lips met. She was now Mrs. Fleming, and nothing could change that. As they were about to leave, the bridesmaid pointed out that Amber's necklace was missing. Retrieving the jewelry box from her, Darren assured, Let me take care of it. Amber watched with anticipation as Darren delicately opened the jewelry box. The necklace inside sparkled brilliantly, each diamond capturing the sunlight in a mesmerizing dance. Darren, however, paused in confusion upon seeing it. This wasn't the one I purchased for our wedding, he remarked. Amber gently replied, It was my mother's. I wanted to wear her jewelry as I became your wife. Darren studied the necklace, particularly intrigued by a small, intricately designed emblem at its end. Is something wrong? Amber inquired, noticing his fixation. Nothing at all, he replied, moving behind her to clasp the necklace around her neck. As he did, he observed similar emblems on the back of her diamond earrings and on a bracelet she wore. Pushing his curiosity aside, he took a moment to truly see Amber, now adorned with her family heirlooms. You look stunning he whispered, leaning in to share an intimate kiss in front of their assembled guests. Their friends cheered playfully. Matt, always one for humor, teased, should we all step away and give you two some privacy before the ceremony? Darren shot him a stern look, prompting him to zip his lips. Turning, Matt noticed Harry's gaze lingering on Amber. Keep your eyes in check, Matt joked, giving Harry a nudge. What are you on about? Harry asked, genuinely confused. Your staring at Amber had me thinking your eyes might just fall out, Matt laughed, loud enough for both Darren and Amber to overhear. With a playful smirk, Darren chimed in, Harry, my brother, surely you wouldn't be eyeing my wife like that? Amber chuckled, well aware of men's ways. She knew, as they all did, that Harry's gaze was innocent. Earlier, when he had looked at her, he had been reminded of her sister, Suzanne. The sisters bore a strong resemblance to each other, and the sight of Amber had momentarily transported Harry back in time. Lost in his thoughts, Harry pondered whether Suzanne, ever the doting sister, would make a surprise appearance at the wedding. He knew how much she cherished Amber, and the thought of her being there filled him with hope. When the possibility of seeing Suzanne crossed his mind, Harry couldn't help but break into a grin. Man, look at you, Matt teased, catching sight of Harry's goofy smile. Lately, Harry seemed more reserved, even turning down the offer to hang out at the bar surrounded by gorgeous women. It was unlike him. Despite Harry's formerly wild ways, it looked like he was now smitten by someone. Guess love's in the air, Matt mused to himself. While Darren was getting hitched and Harry appeared lovestruck, Matt reveled in his own status as Michigan's most eligible bachelor, 
free from the entanglements of romantic drama. The day continued with Darren and Amber moving to the lavish Fleming Mansion, followed by a reception at a renowned hotel. The wedding was a grand affair, drawing both the Michigan elite and those from more modest backgrounds, like the Jordan family. Amber had extended an invitation to Jordan. She doubted he'd show up, especially considering how his wife Bonnie and his daughter Stella had once plotted against Darren. Amber had clearly underestimated Bonnie's audacity. Jordan himself was reluctant to bring Bonnie and Stella to Amber's wedding, but Bonnie had thrown a fit, threatening to divorce him if she wasn't allowed to attend. The idea of divorce wasn't new to Jordan. He had considered it in the past, but he knew that Bonnie would likely take their children with her, and he worried about them, especially Stella. Under Bonnie's influence, Stella had become cunning, often playing the damsel in distress. Their son, on the other hand, was still innocent, doing fairly well in school. Fine, I'll take you, but you have to behave, Jordan said, after finally relenting to her. I am your wife, after all. If you hadn't, I'd assume you're seeing someone else, Bonnie retorted. Jordan had long grown weary of her sarcasm. In anticipation of Darren and Amber's wedding, a high-profile event that had the whole of Michigan buzzing, Bonnie eagerly used Jordan's credit card for a shopping spree. To her, attending the wedding was an opportunity to flaunt and perhaps mend some bridges. She had once tried to orchestrate a match between Darren and her daughter Stella, but those plans fell apart. She blamed Amber for Darren's eventual disinterest in Stella, especially after he found out about her night with Carlos. It was a messy situation that Bonnie felt Amber had exacerbated. Stella's involvement with Carlos was a fleeting moment of vulnerability, and in Bonnie's eyes, not a reflection of where Stella's heart truly lay. She believed Stella deserved someone like Darren and hoped to find a way to reconnect them during the wedding. Stella had mixed feelings about attending the wedding. She had grown closer to Carlos since that night, but every time she looked at him, her mind would wander to Darren. She truly believed Darren was the one for her. Arriving at the hotel, which was owned by the Flemings and touted as the best in Michigan, Stella's heart ached. The venue had been exclusively reserved for the wedding celebrations. As she stepped out, she saw Darren, looking ever so dashing, greeting guests. And there was Amber, radiant in her bridal attire. Why did Amber get to have him? Stella pondered as she approached the entrance. Bonnie noticed Stella's somber demeanor and nudged her. Stella put on a smile. Stand out at the reception, she urged. I got it, Mom, Stella replied. Bonnie leaned in and whispered, You don't envision a future with Carlos, do you? Their continued relationship after that night was something Jordan was oblivious to. Many assumed it was just a one-night stand, especially given that Carlos was married to Lori. The consensus was that Stella and Carlos couldn't possibly be a long-term item. Even though it might seem like Carlos was the one infatuated with Stella, the truth was deeper. From that one night, Stella had decided to willingly enter a relationship with Carlos. Lori, Carlos's wife, had also come to the wedding. She was standing with David. Amber hadn't extended an invitation to Lori or Shannon. Greg, whom Amber had never truly accepted as her father, was dismayed by her decision. Shannon often chided Amber for her coldness, yet Greg remained silent. His heartache rendered him speechless. Lori was initially reluctant to attend Amber's wedding. She believed Amber had caused disruptions during her own wedding to Carlos, leading to a strain in their relationship. But her current animosity wasn't aimed at Amber. It was towards Stella. When Amber invited Jordan, Lori knew that Bonnie, ever eager to be in the limelight, wouldn't miss the wedding. And where Bonnie went, Stella would follow. Bonnie's ambitions of finding a wealthy match for Stella were well known. Lori's intention to attend was clear, to prevent another liaison between Stella and Carlos. David, perhaps sensing potential drama, had cautioned Carlos and Lori to behave. Any disruptions at the wedding, David had warned, would result in expulsion from the Watson family. Carlos's standing within the family had shifted. Over the past days, Mia had been briefing him on the Watson family dynamics and advising him to distance himself from Stella. 
Focusing on his career, Carlos tried to spend time with Lori, but he found their relationship lackluster compared to the connection he felt with Stella. Carlos appreciated Stella's gentle nature and the effort she put into understanding him. And when he saw Stella, elegant in a tasteful off-shoulder gown, at the hotel entrance, he was captivated. His gaze was fixed on her, clearly expressing his admiration. The wedding at the Flemings had become a breeding ground for something dramatic to take place. During the wedding procession, Stella was walking a step behind Jordan. She couldn't help but smile when she caught Carlos's admiring gaze. Lori's face contorted with anger as she witnessed their silent exchange, her hand clenched tightly into a fist. David also watched the scene unfold and sighed internally. He had hoped Carlos would focus on his responsibilities and stay out of trouble. But seeing the look in Carlos's eyes, David could easily discern his lingering affections for Stella. Let them be, he thought resignedly, making his way into the hotel. However, the center of attention today was supposed to be Darren and Amber. Jordan was always protective of Stella and greeted Carlos with a frosty demeanor. He was still displeased by Carlos's relationship with his daughter. He hadn't excused their intimacy as of yet. Hello, uncle, Carlos greeted him with a grin. He had intended to mirror Lori's more familiar term, uncle, to wish him. Jordan's response was a dismissive grunt. Turning his attention back to Stella, Carlos greeted her warmly. His gaze was filled with unmistakable affection. So engrossed was he in Stella that he seemed to forget Lori's presence entirely. Carlos, Lori interjected, her voice was dripping with ice. Their public interaction had drawn the attention of many attendees. The rumors of Carlos's affair with Lori's cousin were well known throughout Michigan. Observing his unabashed admiration for Stella, many in the crowd exchanged knowing glances and shook their heads in disapproval. Carlos was beyond insensible. Lori, Stella greeted with a mischievous grin, a stark contrast to Lori's fuming expression. Why are you here? Stella feigned surprise, then added snidely, I thought Amber didn't invite you. Without warning, Lori's hand whipped out, delivering a sharp slap on Stella's face. The motion was so swift, neither Bonnie nor Carlos could intervene. Carlos's face darkened instantly upon seeing Stella's distress. Lori, what's gotten into you? Stella yelled. Shouldn't I react when you're trying to take away my husband? Lori snapped back. Pushing Lori aside, Carlos rushed to Stella's side. Stella, are you okay? He asked gently. Blinking back tears, Stella whispered, I'm fine. Jordan was unable to stomach the scene any longer. With palpable disdain for the onlookers, he made his way into the hotel while carrying gifts for Amber and Darren. Bonnie tried defending her daughter and scolded Lori. You've crossed a line, Lori. Carlos gave a cold glance to Lori and followed them inside. Lori, too, trailed close behind them, wary of any further interactions between Carlos and Stella. After an entire day of festivities, Amber's smile was on the verge of waning, but there was genuine happiness in her eyes. Soon, David approached her, and as Darren greeted him, he passed a substantial red envelope to Amber. Wishing you and Darren a lifetime of marital bliss, and may you soon be blessed with children, David said lovingly. Bella was also there and caught on to the latter part of David's wish. She chuckled and said, Thank you so much, then nudged Ryan, who was standing nearby. Come on, Ryan, what are you waiting for? Escort Mr. David inside. Though swamped with tasks, Ryan rushed to attend to David. The Fleming family had a multitude of staff at their disposal, yet Bella seemed to enjoy singling him out for chores. He remembered Amber's kindness from before and resolved to put in extra effort that day for her wedding. Right, this way, Ryan offered with a welcoming smile. David appraised Ryan, noting the distinct characteristics of the Fleming men. Ryan had been a bit of a troublemaker, but after facing life's challenges, David sensed he would grow into his responsibilities. His gaze shifted, and he spotted Carlos entering with Stella on his arm. Jordan walked toward Amber. Upon reaching her, he handed her another red envelope. Bonnie was taking note of the envelope's thickness and realized it wasn't the original one she had handed to Jordan. Thank you, Uncle Jordan, Amber expressed her gratitude. 
please, Uncle Jordan, come on in, Darren joined in. As Jordan proceeded, Bonnie discreetly tugged at his sleeve. How much did you put in there for Amber? Jordan whispered a figure, causing a shocked Bonnie to lightly smack him. That's a lot. Where'd you even get that money? It's not like you don't have your own business to take care of, she taunted. Let's not argue about this here, Jordan replied, feeling somewhat embarrassed. Bonnie considered for a moment, then shrugged it off. Well, Amber will just have to double it for Stella's wedding anyway. Following Jordan, Carlos, Stella, and their entourage moved inside. Amber caught the sight of the commotion outside and acknowledged their entry. Amber. Carlos approached her, momentarily taken aback by how stunning she looked. However, upon catching Darren's chilly stare, he chose to step away. When Amber saw Lori, she was perplexed. Lori was soon halted by Amber's call as she wasn't invited to the wedding. Amber, are you trying to push me out? Lori shot back. Irritation was evident on her face. Just because you're with Darren now doesn't mean you can do anything. You've quite the nerve, not even inviting your own father to your wedding, she mocked Amber. Amber's response was calm as her eyes drifted to Stella who appeared a little too focused. Seems Stella still has her sights on Darren. She then directed her attention back to Lori. A little advice for you. Maybe try taking a page out of Stella's book. You don't have to be confrontational all the time. Sometimes a few tears can be more effective with men, she remarked. Amber. As Amber finished, Stella's eyes welled up with tears, making her appear as if she'd been wronged. She looked towards Darren with those teary eyes. But Darren's gaze remained solely on Amber, leaving Stella feeling embarrassed. With no other choice, she followed Lori towards the elevator. Amber checked the time and thought it best to rest in the bridal suite before the reception. She made her way upstairs, eagerly kicking off her heels once inside the hotel room. The wedding day had been nothing short of exhausting, and she longed for a quick nap. As she massaged her sore feet, the sweet door opened. Assuming it was one of her bridesmaids, Amber didn't pay much attention. That was until she caught a glimpse of a familiar figure in her peripheral vision. Raising her eyes, she was met with Suzanne's smiling face. Amber, you look absolutely radiant today, Suzanne complimented as she approached her. She'd been waiting in the room all this while, anticipating Amber's arrival. In shock, Amber rose slowly. The sight of Suzanne felt surreal. She approached her, initially tentative, but then with urgency, grasped Suzanne's hands. The warmth from Suzanne's touch affirmed that this was no illusion. Sis, Amber exclaimed, tears streaming down her face. It really is you, she added. You shouldn't cry on your wedding day, Suzanne softly chided, dabbing away her tears. Amber chuckled amidst her tears, seeing you has made me so happy. This reunion was undeniably the best wedding gift. She'd assumed her estranged sister and Emma wouldn't make it. Yet here was Suzanne, looking nothing like the troubled woman from Amber's memories. You've grown so much, Suzanne mused with a fond smile, running her fingers through Amber's hair. Amber thought back to seven years prior when she was only 12. Time had flown by, and she'd grown from a child to the beautiful bride standing before Suzanne now. Sis, are you doing okay? Concern filled Amber's voice as she looked at Suzanne. Suzanne smiled reassuringly. I'm okay now. She chose not to tell Amber about her recurring struggles. After all, Amber was getting married and starting a new chapter in her life. That's wonderful. Amber enveloped Suzanne in a joyful embrace. Have you met Darren yet? He's been amazing to me, she said excitedly, guiding Suzanne to sit beside her on the bed. She had plans of introducing Suzanne to a good man, someone deserving of her, especially after all she'd been through. I have, Suzanne replied with a chuckle. She'd seen photos of Darren and even met him once. As long as he's good to you, I believe Darren will take care of you, she continued. Yes, absolutely, Amber affirmed. You should come over to the Fleming residence sometime, she added, holding Suzanne's hand with a playful pout. I can't bear the thought of losing you again. Suzanne offered a tender smile. With their mother passing early and their father not always being supportive, she'd played a maternal role for Amber. 
Amber had always leaned on Suzanne. When she was mistreated in school, it was Suzanne who'd stepped in. For years, she had been there for every milestone in Amber's life. Now that Amber had found someone to care for her, Suzanne felt it might be time to step back, allowing Amber to thrive in her new life. I can't come. Seeing you marry is enough for me, Suzanne gently declined. Why? Amber asked with a touch of confusion in her eyes. Suzanne chuckled, knowing the complexities of the situation. Marrying into Michigan's most influential family meant Amber was now in a world that valued reputation above all. She couldn't risk exposing Amber to the harsh realities of that world or letting others discover that Amber's sister had battled her own demons. You are with the Flemings now, she remarked. Amber chuckled. Having wed into Michigan's most prestigious family, she understood the weight of upholding a flawless reputation. I've got some matters to attend to, Suzanne mentioned. Then, with a hint of hesitancy, she added, Amber, I found Robert. While Suzanne's words were paired with a smile, Amber could sense the unease lurking in her sister's eyes. So much has changed in these seven years, Amber murmured. Is he still kind to you? She inquired gently. Suzanne gave a brief smile, followed by a nod. Yeah. Amber yearned to delve deeper, but Suzanne, rising from her seat, interrupted her thoughts. Just cherish your happiness, Amber. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters to me. As the wedding festivities were about to commence, Darren's phone rang from an unknown number. Considering the vast number of guests, he assumed it might be one of them. However, the cold, taunting laughter that greeted him on the other end of the line signaled otherwise. Mr. Darren, I have someone very dear to you. Immediately, Amber's image flashed in Darren's mind. He called out to her, trying to mask his rising panic. He knew they had security measures in place, but no system was entirely foolproof. Turning to Harry, he urgently instructed, Check the suite. See if Amber is there. As Harry departed, the voice jeered, your memory is slipping, Mr. Darren. Just then, a text buzzed in. It was a video of Isabella, bound and distressed, screaming, Darren, help me! Realizing it wasn't Amber in danger but Isabella, Darren felt a fleeting moment of relief, only for it to be replaced by concern for Isabella. I want ten million, the man demanded. I'm sure that's chump change for you. Send it now. Matt was observing Darren's visible distress. He glanced at the phone's screen and remarked, Someone's trying to crash your wedding day, surely. His implication was clear. The timing was deliberate, an attempt to disrupt the most significant day in Darren's life. As the video continued to play, Isabella's voice rang out, filled with desperation. Darren, it's me. Please, save me. Darren was perplexed. At that moment, he didn't know what to do. Matt was a close confidant of Darren. He overheard the distressing exchange on the phone. Are you going to help her out or not? He asked Darren. It's just 10 million. That's pocket change for you, he remarked, attempting to lighten the mood with a grin. Darren had told Matt the previous night about the situation with Isabella being involved with Julie. With a steely gaze, Darren addressed the caller. Let your boss behind you know that they're wasting their time on such petty games. His reply insinuated he wasn't going to save Isabella. Darren, your wedding's about to kick off. Matt casually checked his watch, nudging Darren with a light-hearted reminder. The shadowy voice at the other end threatened, If you're not saving her, then we'll just have to get rid of the excess baggage. Clearly, they were trying to force Darren's hand. And Darren, a man accustomed to control, hated being cornered into making decisions. Without another word, he ended the call and handed the phone back to Matt. Julie's schemes are next level. She knew you were getting married today and decided to leverage Isabella just to mess with you. Matt couldn't help but comment. Even though the Geller family hadn't been invited to the wedding, Darren had still ramped up security, ensuring they wouldn't pose a threat to Amber. Ten million might be a drop in the bucket for you, but bailing on the wedding? That's a big statement, Matt continued. Darren, always the composed one, adjusted his suit. Let's head inside, he stated.
You truly don't give a damn about Isabella. Was she even the right one? Matt trailed behind. Stopping in his tracks, Darren turned around. His voice was devoid of emotion. That was in the past. When Darren had learned that Isabella had returned and was aligned with Julie, he'd pieced things together. It was clear she had teamed up with Julie against him and Amber. Isabella was history. Her return changed nothing for Darren. He was committed to Amber and had already planned for the day when Isabella might come back. Besides, with her now being a pawn in Julie's games, Darren's choices were clear-cut. He wasn't one to be swayed by sentiment or show mercy. Thus, the call about Isabella's abduction didn't elicit an ounce of sympathy from him. Nothing and no one would spoil his wedding day, not even Isabella. Man, you're one cold fish, Matt commented. Back in the day, Darren made waves within his family when he confronted the Geller family to save someone. Yet with Amber in the picture, he pushed memories of Isabella to the back of his mind. Darren, let me handle the ransom for you, Matt suggested with a sly grin, hinting, wouldn't hurt to have another woman with me. Darren's face darkened. Watch it, Matt. Don't push me, he remarked. Matt shrugged casually. Your call. As Darren headed inside the venue, Matt pulled out a cigarette and lit up, signaling to a man in a black suit nearby. He was one of his guys. Taking a drag, Matt ordered, Track down Julie. Honestly, he was feeling a bit left out. Darren was tying the knot, Harry was happily paired off, and recently, he hadn't found any woman he was interested in. But stirring the pot between Darren and Amber? That could be entertaining. Isabella was still in shock from Darren's call. She turned to Julie, the woman orchestrating the whole scheme. What's our next move? She asked. Darren's refusal to engage was not part of their plan. They'd only asked for 10 million. If Darren wasn't personally getting involved, he should have at least sent someone with the cash. Their main goal had been to reignite a spark between Darren and Isabella betting that even a hint of a past flame would drive a wedge between Darren and Amber. But Darren was proving unyielding. You're worthless, Julie hissed at Isabella. Despite all her scheming to bring Isabella back into the fold, she was turning out to be more of a pawn than a player. Isabella sensed the danger in Julie's icy gaze and protested, Darren won't just leave me hanging. In an attempt to make the abduction seem more credible, Julie had roughed up Isabella. Her face was marked and bruised, which Isabella hoped would earn his sympathy. You're dreaming if you think he'd pay to get you back. You're history to him, Julie spat back. With desperation mounting, Isabella pleaded, please don't send me away. A realization struck her, and she hurriedly said, Darren must have figured out you were behind this. He knew it was a setup. That's why he didn't come. Julie eyed the man beside her, pondering on Isabella's words. If Darren had indeed seen through their strategy, refusing to take the bait, their plans had failed, she wondered. Please give me another chance, Isabella begged as tears streamed down her face. Julie watched Isabella's tears and paused before saying, Isabella, if Darren has moved on, maybe it's time for you to head home. She stood up and softly delivered those words to Isabella. Grasping the weight of Julie's advice, Isabella knew that now she was back in Michigan, she'd do anything to win Darren's affection again. Why should she care if Darren and Amber are married? After all, she knew Darren first. It was Amber who took him away from her. I understand, Isabella responded. On the other hand, having spent some time with Amber, Suzanne got up to leave. She gently brushed strands of Amber's hair behind her ears and smiled at her warmly. Where are you headed? Amber asked, grasping Suzanne's hand, noting how fragile it felt. Suzanne's frailty tugged at Amber's heartstrings. She wished she could take her sister home and nourish her back to health. You forgot? I told you, I found him. He's outside waiting for me, Suzanne revealed. Giving Amber a tight hug, she whispered, Remember to always be happy. She then let go of Amber and made her way out of the hotel suite. Watching Suzanne leave so soon after their brief reunion, 
Amber felt a pang of sadness. She wished Suzanne could stay, especially now that she was about to start a new chapter in her life. Suzanne would have her own life, with Robert by her side. Exiting the suite, Suzanne unexpectedly ran into Harry in the hallway. Having heard Amber was around, Harry had come to visit. Seeing Suzanne, his surprise was evident. Picking up his pace, a genuine smile lit up his face. Suzanne caught sight of the grinning Harry. Suzanne, he exclaimed, I've missed you. His eyes sparkled, but Suzanne turned away, avoiding his gaze. As Harry's emotions surged, he instinctively reached for Suzanne's hand, but quickly let go, fearing she might be uncomfortable. I've searched everywhere for you, Harry confessed, his cheeks reddening. Every encounter with her made his heart race. He resembled a smitten teenager, bumbling and nervous around his crush. However, Suzanne couldn't bring herself to meet his earnest gaze. She didn't want to lead him on or give him false hope. You didn't need to search for me, she said softly. Lifting her gaze to meet his eyes, she added, Dr. Harry, I truly appreciate how you looked out for me in the past. Harry's grin faltered and he began to speak, wishing to convey his genuine willingness to be there for her always. But Suzanne preempted his words. I found him. The one I truly care for, she continued, emphasizing each word, the weight of which visibly drained the color from Harry's face. He had been through love's highs and lows before, but this time was different. It genuinely hurt to hear Suzanne express affection for another man. Finally, he managed a weak response. I see. He wanted to wish her well, to say he hoped she found happiness, but the words wouldn't come. He couldn't get them out. Goodbye, Dr. Harry, Suzanne said with a sad smile. As she briskly passed him, Harry caught a hint of her familiar scent. The urge to reach out and stop her overwhelmed him. But he couldn't. She didn't share his feelings, not in the same way. He watched as Suzanne reached the corridor's end. A handsome man appeared, putting an arm around her waist, despite a noticeable limp. Harry. Amber's voice interrupted his thoughts. From her vantage point, Amber had overheard the exchange between Suzanne and Harry. Clutching her wedding dress, she stood hesitantly at the doorway. The gown's length and weight restrained her, otherwise she would have rushed to Suzanne as well. Why didn't you go after her? Amber questioned. If she's set her heart on someone else, what's the point? Harry responded with a touch of bitterness in his voice. Amber gazed at Harry, noting the sadness in his eyes. Harry, are you really falling for my sister? She asked. Caught off guard, Harry nodded. Very much so, he admitted. The way she's grown so thin, I just want to take care of her, he said with a soft smile. Amber was taken aback. Those words, simple as they were, moved her deeply. Harry, I honestly hope that Suzanne will end up with you she said with conviction. A puzzled Harry looked at Amber. Why? Suzanne found Robert. Shouldn't you be happy for her? He asked. Because, Amber replied, her gaze following the direction where Suzanne and Robert had disappeared, I didn't see happiness in her eyes when she was with him. She completed her statement. Meanwhile, Suzanne and Robert stepped into an elevator. Who was that? Robert inquired. Harry, Suzanne replied. The Smith family's second son? As realization dawned, Robert pulled Suzanne closer. Suzanne met his eyes with a smile, and Robert responded by kissing her deeply, biting her lower lip slightly in his fervor. I don't like seeing you with other men, he murmured, his fears evident in his voice, especially since he had lost Suzanne once before. Chuckling softly, Suzanne responded, You'll just have to keep a closer eye on me then. She stretched up and planted a soft kiss on his lips. And treat me even better. Or who knows, I might just run off with someone else. Robert's expression grew serious at the jest and he tightened his hold on her. That's not even funny. 
As the two bantered, the elevator doors slid open to reveal Darren and Matt, who were on their way to find Amber. Seriously? Right here in the open? Matt exclaimed with feigned shock, noticing the intimate pose between Robert and Suzanne. Then, his eyes settled on Suzanne, admiring her beauty. Darren followed Matt's line of sight, and he too was taken away by Suzanne's beauty. Suzanne greeted Darren with a smile, recognizing him as Amber's soon-to-be husband. Hey there, what's your last name? Matt asked, choosing to disregard the cold look Robert gave him as he tried to strike up a conversation. Suzanne was not keen on engaging with Matt and gave him a curt nod in response. Robert sensed her unease and subtly positioned himself by her side, protecting her. They tried to walk away from the scene. Watching Suzanne's retreating figure, Matt remarked with a hint of appreciation, she's strikingly beautiful, though a tad on the slender side. She was arguably more stunning than any woman he'd encountered. Darren must have some impressive connections to have such an attractive guest, Matt thought, and the man with her seemed to be someone of significance. His thoughts drifted back to Darren, and he noticed that even Darren seemed captivated by Suzanne. Careful there, Darren, Matt teased. Don't get so lost in admiring another woman. Amber might not take kindly to that. Darren snapped out of his reverie and chose not to engage with Matt's playful jab. As Matt prepared to exit the elevator, Darren grabbed his shoulder and stopped him. And where do you think you're off to? He asked. To pursue a lovely lady? Matt responded cheekily. The guy with that beauty seemed intimidating, but he was up for the challenge. Darren chose to redirect their focus and pressed the button for the wedding suite. How about you watch my wedding first? Matt internally groaned. Darren knew exactly how to rile him up. Still, he figured there'd be plenty of opportunities to meet someone later. Right now, his friend's wedding was the priority. Exiting the elevator, they found Amber and Harry in deep conversation. Harry, quite brave of you, Matt quipped, knowing well that Harry harbored feelings for someone other than Amber. Hearing Matt's voice, Amber looked up to find Darren approaching. A soft smile spread across her face upon seeing him, and Darren's expression was warm in response. Hubby? Amber began, her voice tinged with curiosity. Did you run into my sister right now? Before she could elaborate, Darren responded, I did. Amber's expression fell slightly. I wish she'd stay longer with us, she murmured, thinking about how wonderful it would be to see her sister daily. Understanding her sentiment, Darren comforted her. Amber, your sister has her own path to follow. And remember, I'll always be here for you. Amber nodded, appreciating his assurance. Wait, that lady was your sister? Matt interjected realizing the connection between the beautiful woman he'd seen earlier and Amber. He remembered hearing about Amber's elder sister, Suzanne, being quite the head-turner some seven years ago. Unfortunately, back then, he was in a different phase of his life. By the time he had gotten his act together, word was that Suzanne had moved overseas after getting married. However, Matt noted that the man accompanying Suzanne earlier seemed to have some physical limitations, but if he remembered correctly, nobody from the renowned family had such a condition. Amber, could you introduce me to your sister? You know, for old time's sake, Matt asked, flashing a charming grin. His proposition was met with two resounding responses. Absolutely not. In your dreams. Amber and Harry had both chimed in, shooting down Matt's hopes. Matt wasn't surprised by Amber's rejection. Given his reputation for being somewhat of a ladies' man, it made sense that she wouldn't want to introduce her sister to him. But why was Harry objecting? Matt gave Harry a puzzled glance and then chuckled, suspecting a hidden crush. Harry visibly bristled under Matt's gaze and shot back, Matt, don't get any ideas about Suzanne. I wouldn't dare, Matt responded, grinning. Harry's gaze turned icy. It wasn't often he showed irritation, but
but Matt could clearly sense his feelings for Suzanne. It was a shame that Harry's affections seemed unrequited. The wedding ambiance shifted, drawing everyone's attention. As the ceremony neared its commencement, Darren reached out to Amber. Are you ready to entrust your heart to me? He asked playfully. Amber, with a radiant smile, took his hand and responded affectionately. Yes, darling, I do. And I promise to treasure you always. A tender smile played on Darren's lips as he intertwined his fingers with Amber's. Together, they headed towards the elevator that led to the reception hall. He held on to her hand, reflecting on the lifelong commitment he was about to make. She wasn't just a bride. She was his forever love. At the hotel, the atmosphere was charged with excitement as Darren and Amber's wedding ceremony unfolded. As the proceedings began, traditionally the bride's father would walk her down the aisle. However, Amber quickly dismissed the idea. She didn't need Greg's presence for this moment. She wanted to gracefully make her way down the red carpet aisle to the man she loved unconditionally. Outside the venue, the surroundings were serene. Suzanne and Robert, having exited the hotel, paused rather than departing immediately. From her vantage point outside the banquet hall, Suzanne could see Amber move towards Darren. She watched as Darren slid the ring onto Amber's finger and leaned in for a tender kiss. Her dear younger sister had finally found her love, a partner to stand by her side and shield her from the world. Overwhelmed by the poignant moment, tears welled up in Suzanne's eyes. Robert, sensing her emotions, gently held her hand in comfort. He looked at Suzanne's tearful expression, choosing not to utter any words, but he tightened his grip on her hand in a silent gesture of support. Once the ceremony concluded, Suzanne made her exit. She swiftly entered Robert's car, completely oblivious to the fact that someone was watching her. It was her own father, Greg, who was watching from a distance in another vehicle. Although it was his youngest daughter's big day, Greg didn't feel entitled to be a part of the festivities. He had arrived early and stayed in the confines of his car, observing Amber and Darren enter the hotel and later greet their guests. He felt like a mere spectator, witnessing a stranger's celebration. The feeling of detachment weighed heavily on him. Though Amber wasn't his biological child, she was Maya's daughter. In the past, Greg would have confronted and chastised Amber for not inviting him. But recent events, particularly those surrounding the Geller family, made him reflect on his negligence towards Amber. Given how he nearly jeopardized Amber's well-being at the Geller residence, it wasn't surprising she hadn't included him in the wedding. He accepted that he lacked the moral ground to question her about it. Greg was about to leave the scene when he spotted Suzanne and Robert emerging from the hotel. He noticed Robert assisting Suzanne, clearly affected by a physical ailment. Instantly, Greg recognized his daughter. After all, Suzanne had always held a special place in his heart. As they drove away, Greg remained deep in thought, reflecting on his own choices and wondering about the future of his fractured relationships. His mind raced as he contemplated a new realization. He wondered if Suzanne had recovered. Observing her stepping into Robert's car only solidified this belief for him. If she was indeed well, then Greg felt some peace. But the lingering question remained. Why was Suzanne still associating herself with Robert? Hadn't she endured enough for his sake? She had lost seven years of her life because of him. And Robert? He probably bore a grudge against the Brooks family after losing his leg. Emotions swirled within Greg, a tumultuous mix of relief for Suzanne's wellness and anxiety about her relationship with Robert. How on earth did Robert come into the picture again? He wondered. The wedding reception wrapped up, and Darren and Amber began their journey back to the Fleming residence. As they headed home, the skies opened up, drenching the streets with rain. Inside the car, Bella was there. Thomas and Ryan had already returned to the Fleming mansion over an hour ago. Thomas had been exhausted because of his age and decided to head home with Ryan. 
Darren, don't sleep off tonight, Bella cautioned Darren just before they stepped out of the vehicle. Amber was puzzled by the remark until Bella added, I'd like to hold my grandchild soon. A slight blush tinted Amber's cheeks. Darren exited the car, unfurled an umbrella, and waited for Amber. The two held each other's hands and made their way to the Fleming residence. Through the window, Bella watched them, reminiscing about her own youth with Thomas. Although, she reflected, her relationship with Thomas was even more tumultuous than that of Darren's. Witnessing her son's newfound joy, a gentle smile graced her lips. With her husband's companionship in their twilight years, she felt content and at peace. The rain intensified, but Darren prioritized shielding Amber, allowing more than half the umbrella to cover her. By the time they reached the Fleming mansion, half of his attire was drenched. Having arrived a bit earlier, Uncle Will approached them and offered them a dry towel. Though the rain had been unexpected, the day had been fairly blessed. It seemed that the weather gods showed kindness to Darren and Amber. Darren was still holding Amber's hands and smiled politely at Uncle Will. The warmth from his touch seemed to radiate through Amber's fingers, warming not just her hand, but her heart as well. Darren took Amber's hand and led her upstairs to her room. There was an air of anticipation between them. She sensed Darren's eagerness to share this private moment. A flush warmed her cheeks, and he too felt the excitement of their first night as a married couple. Darling, why don't you freshen up? Once in the bedroom, she gently nudged him towards the bathroom. Having gotten wet from the rain earlier, she thought he'd appreciate a warm shower, and she had something special planned for when he returned. Darren leaned down to give her a tender kiss. With a soft smile, he whispered, I'll be right back. As he disappeared into the bathroom, she touched her warm cheek, her mind filled with thoughts of the love and intimacy they were about to share. When he emerged, the room was bathed in soft, dim light. Amber was nestled under the covers, just her face was peeking out. Hubby, she called softly. He approached the bed, noticing a glimpse of her bare shoulder outside the blanket. What was she up to? He wondered. Hubby, she called again. As he drew closer, she reached out and pulled him into a warm embrace, her arms wrapping around his neck. That's when he realized that she wasn't wearing her usual sleepwear. Instead, she sported a unique black dress that stood out in stark contrast against the soft lighting. Do you like it? She asked, her voice tinged with a hint of shyness. He was captivated by her gaze. The outfit had been a gift from her friend Emma, and though Amber had felt too shy to wear it before, she had chosen this special night to surprise Darren. He felt an overwhelming affection towards her. Yes, he replied softly. She raised an eyebrow, seeking a more thoughtful response. I chose this outfit carefully. Do you like it? It's beautiful, isn't it? She whispered, hoping for a compliment. Caught off guard by her closeness, he murmured, It's perfect. He then pulled her into a gentle embrace. Their interaction was lighthearted and playful. You always have a way of catching me off guard. He chuckled. She playfully traced a pattern on his chest. And what exactly am I catching you off guard with? She asked with a smile. The two were deeply connected, more so now as newlyweds. I hope this night is as special as you are, she whispered, her gaze never leaving Darren's. Drawn to her sentiment, he leaned in and kissed her passionately. Their moment was disrupted by a sudden rainstorm outside, complete with rolling thunder. The noise made her seek comfort in his embrace. Feeling her slight unease, Darren gently asked, does the thunder bother you? Not when I have you, Amber responded. Every subsequent rumble made her draw nearer to him. His embrace signaled the comfort and security she felt in his presence. Watching the rain like this, it's so calming, she mused as she stared at the droplets streaming down the window. 
Darren's commitment today reaffirmed to Amber what she already knew. He was reliable and steadfast and would cherish her forever. Wordlessly, Darren wrapped her in his arms and provided warmth against the chill of the evening. After some time, Amber's focus shifted from the rain. The world outside might be covered in darkness, but he was all she could see at the moment. I'm not sleepy yet, she whispered. It was well past midnight, but the excitement of the day left Amber restless. She placed a finger over his lips, silencing any words he might have had before leaning in for a kiss. It's late, he murmured as he was concerned about her exhaustion. You should try to sleep, he added. But we've only just begun, she playfully responded, highlighting the special nature of their wedding night. She softly traced his face with her fingers. You know, when you hit 20, we'll need to make things even more official. He gazed down at her with a fond smile. So just a heads up, if you ever upset me, I might just pack my bags. She grinned back at him. You think you can just take off? He chuckled, giving her a light, teasing push. Amber pretended to be humiliated and pouted at him. Yes, I have my ways. She always had an edgy response ready. Darren suddenly got serious. We have to communicate, you know? Always be open with each other and share, he insisted. And just so you know, divorce isn't in my vocabulary, he continued. Seeing the earnest look in Darren's eyes, Amber nodded in agreement. Understood. Hey, the night's still young. Why stop now? She teased with a mischievous grin, leaning in to press her lips to Darren's. The mood was disrupted by a knock on the bedroom door. Uncle Will's voice came from outside the door. Sir, are you still up? He asked. Darren was instantly irritated listening to him. Their intimate moment had been interrupted. Uncle Will sure picked a fine time to stop by, Amber muttered, a hint of annoyance in her tone. Darren shared her sentiment, but rose from the bed and opened the door. His expression was neutral, but clearly not pleased. The tension in the room was palpable as the door swung open and Uncle Will looked as if he regretted his timing. He'd considered knocking an hour earlier, but hesitated, not wanting to interrupt the newlyweds. He'd assumed they'd be sleeping by now. Darren's icy stare made Uncle Will reconsider his decision. What's going on? He asked. Uncle Will felt a pang of guilt, sensing he'd destroyed the mood. As he began to retreat, Darren pressed, out with it, Uncle Will. What was so urgent? Given Uncle Will's usual tact, Darren deduced it must be something significant to intrude at this hour. We have a visitor downstairs, Uncle Will responded. Darren's brow furrowed in confusion. Who? Uncle Will glanced towards Amber before leaning in to whisper the name to Darren. Darren's face tightened. He turned back to the bedroom and addressed Amber. Sorry, looks like I've got some business to attend to. I'll be back soon. Amber looked at him and a hint of frustration rose in her eyes, but without showing it, she let out a playful laugh. Such a charmer, Darren commented, leaning down to place a gentle kiss on her forehead. She grimaced slightly. I'm not a pet, you know, she said, a playful edge in her voice. Just rest for a bit. I'll be back soon, Darren advised. But with his sudden exit and the unexpected interruption from Uncle Will, how could Amber even think of sleeping? She turned on her bedside lamp, the warm glow illuminating her phone. She'd set the mood for the evening, soft lighting, a sleek nightgown, even the faint scent of incense wafting through the room. Picking up her phone, she smiled when she saw a message from Emma. Emma's message was a pleasant distraction, momentarily taking her mind off Darren's absence. After all, she texted Amber after a long while. Darren was now donning a robe and followed Uncle Will to the main floor. A woman in the hall perked up when she heard his footsteps. Her gaze locked onto him and a reminiscent smile was tugging at her lips. It was Isabella. Ten years ago, Darren was just a young guy in his twenties. Now, with every step he took, 
he exuded the sophisticated air of a man who had seen and done much, amplified by his years leading the Flemings, giving him an undeniable presence. Isabella's heart raced as memories flooded back. He had this laid-back allure that was captivating. Darren, she greeted with a warm smile as he approached. Darren descended the stairs and met her gaze. Taking a seat on the living room couch, he turned to Uncle Will. His expression was neutral. What's this about? He asked. She showed up shortly after you two got back, Uncle Will began. Miss Isabella insisted on seeing you. Uncle Will's decision to let Isabella in wasn't to cause any tension between Darren and Amber. He just understood that turning Isabella away would have likely caused more problems than it solved. Allowing her to linger outside might lead to a scene, drawing unwanted attention. Uncle Will was especially concerned about any disruption affecting Amber. The last thing he wanted was for Darren and Amber to have any issues because of him. The pouring rain outside made him relent, allowing Isabella to enter. Darren, I've returned, Isabella announced as she approached him, tears forming in her eyes. Darren reclined on the couch and looked up at her. Why should your return matter to me? His detached response stung her, and her face crumpled in pain. Darren! She choked back tears, shocked by his cold demeanor. Uncle Will, please escort our guest out, Darren instructed. The last thing he wanted was another confrontation in front of Amber. Darren, please don't send me away, she pleaded. Her clothes were soaked from the rain and made her appear even more desolate. I have nowhere else to turn, she admitted. After coming back to Michigan, Darren was her only hope. Isabella realized that Julie's intention had been to manipulate her. Only Darren could offer her a fresh start. I've returned, Darren. I promise I won't leave again. Isabella moved closer and kneeled before him as tears streamed down her face. Darren observed the distraught Isabella's unchanged expression. On this day, the day of his marriage to Amber, he couldn't help but recall Julie's earlier scheme, kidnapping Isabella in hopes of a ransom. With Isabella now on his doorstep, he was all too aware of the underlying motives. Isabella, we need to leave the past behind, he replied calmly. Had he still harbored feelings for Isabella, he wouldn't have married Amber. His commitment was to Amber now, not Isabella. Over the past decade, Darren had come to a clear realization. His feelings for Isabella had long since faded. Darren! Isabella's voice quivered as she looked up, tears spilling down her cheeks. Darren, do you not love me anymore? I've come back to you and I promise I won't leave again, she said, reaching out and gripping his hand. You can forgive me, can't you? Let's start over. Her voice was filled with desperation. Gently pulling his hand away from her grasp, Darren replied, Isabella, I'm married now. He then turned to Uncle Will and ordered, Uncle Will, please escort her out. Isabella couldn't fathom it. How could Darren, who once cherished her so dearly, now be so indifferent? You'll only realize my worth if I'm gone for good, she cried out in anguish, fearing that once she left the Fleming residence, she'd never be allowed back in. If that's what it takes to make you see, then I'm prepared to go to that length, she said, her voice laden with sorrow. Darren observed her with a dispassionate gaze. His lack of response only intensified her distress. Thinking he was merely brushing off her threats, Isabella suddenly declared, Darren, I truly love you. With determination in her eyes, she began sprinting toward the stark white walls of the room as memories of their happier times together flashed through her mind. But before she could reach her intended target, a gentle voice pierced the tension. Darren! Darren turned toward the source of the voice, startled. Everyone's eyes followed suit, landing on Amber at the top of the stairs. She was draped in a robe similar to his. Upon seeing Isabella halted near the wall, Uncle Will immediately regretted allowing her entry. Hubby, who's your guest? Amber's voice was soft and her demeanor unruffled. 
Silence followed her question. No one knew how to respond to it. Amber was unsure of the identity of the woman in the living room. She had texted Emma earlier from her room, but hadn't received a reply. Feeling restless on her wedding night without Darren by her side, she decided to step out and look for him. As she approached the living area, she could hear a woman's distraught voice echoing through the corridor. You will only forgive me once I am gone for good. She had heard. Amber always felt uneasy when someone used their life as leverage. As she descended the stairs, she caught sight of the woman's tear-streaked face and her rain-soaked figure. The woman's desolation was palpable. Amber quickly surmised from the woman's demeanor that she had feelings for Darren. Another one behind my man, she thought. Under normal circumstances, she would be lenient when women tried to get too close to Darren. But tonight, on their wedding night, if she didn't stand her ground, they might perceive her as a pushover, assuming that Darren was always up for grabs. Darling, it seems you're keeping someone in suspense, Amber teased flirtatiously. Why don't you come up and join me? Her glowing complexion and delicate voice presented a stark contrast to Isabella's distraught appearance. As Isabella observed the radiant, youthful Amber, she was reminded of the cynical advice she'd received about men's preferences for younger women by Julie. Darren's gaze drifted over Amber. Aren't you feeling cold? He quipped. Amber chuckled and adjusted her robe. Darling, are you coming upstairs with me or not? You promised you'd be with me tonight. Her words carried a playful, suggestive undertone. She shot a glance at Isabella's discomfort, feeling no remorse. After all, everyone in Michigan was aware of her union with Darren. This woman's unannounced visit in the dead of night was clearly designed to stir the pot. Darren didn't verbally respond, but he stood up, silently signaling to Amber his intention to join her upstairs. Darren, Isabella's voice quivered, tears spilling as she watched him make his way to the staircase. Won't you give me another chance? Do you really need to see me in pain before you forgive me? she asked. Amber struggled to suppress her grin, noting how Isabella seemed to be playing the victim card again. Then she paused for a while and thought about the way Isabella speaks. They must have shared a history. Otherwise, why would she be pleading for forgiveness? She wondered. Her gaze landed on Darren, who stood a few steps from Isabella. No matter who this woman was, Amber was determined not to let her come between them. However, before she could voice her thoughts, Darren instructed, Uncle Will, please see her out. Isabella hung on every word from Darren's mouth, hoping he'd reconsider. Darren, she choked out, tears streaming down her face. Do you truly no longer love me? Have you forgotten our promises, our love? She asked. His expression tightened at her desperate plea. He glanced upward at Amber, thinking of his past. Yes, he had feelings for Isabella a decade ago, but over time his feelings faded, and both he and Isabella had changed. His primary concern now was that Amber might misinterpret or feel insecure due to Isabella's emotional display. But Amber, to his surprise, wasn't upset or agitated. Instead, she smiled warmly. Honey, it's pouring out there, she observed. It seems harsh to send her away in this weather especially at this hour. Everyone present seemed taken aback by her compassion. Uncle Will looked perplexed. Madam, I'll attend to it right away, he assured. Amber countered with a graceful laugh. Uncle Will, why not offer her a room at your place for the night? She's a friend of Darren's and, by extension, a friend of mine. She turned to Darren, seeking affirmation. Don't you agree, hubby? Darren glanced at Amber. Her eyes were filled with a certain intent. What was she thinking, he wondered. Darling, can we let her stay just for tonight? Amber's voice held a hint of playful insistence. Darren approached her, taking her hand in his. The cold touch of her fingers soothed his nerves. All right, he whispered. Amber was not one to make decisions lightly. 
There had to be a reason she wanted to keep Isabella around. Darren trusted her judgment and felt that if she believed in something, there was merit to it. If it hadn't been for her intervention, Darren would have had Uncle Will escort Isabella straight out of the Fleming estate. He wasn't fond of people who tried to manipulate him or force him into situations he wasn't comfortable with. Isabella seemed momentarily stunned when Darren agreed to let her stay. She probably hadn't expected it. Deep down, she thought that Darren still held a special place for her in his heart and that he couldn't bear to see her in distress. She believed that by staying close to him, she could remind him of their shared past and rekindle old flames. Amber might have youth and beauty on her side, but she was Darren's first love. He had remained single for a decade, which, in her mind, indicated her importance in his life. As Darren and Amber made their way back to their bedroom, Amber pulled her hand away from his with a huff. She gave a disgruntled sound, clearly annoyed with Darren. Their romantic evening seemed to have been interrupted by the unfolding drama. Darren tried to soothe the visibly upset Amber, gently taking her hand. Come on, lie down. Your hand feels cold, he said. Why don't you check on the woman downstairs instead? Amber retorted, clearly peeved. He chuckled at her mild jealousy, finding it endearing. He knew that if Amber hadn't made the decision regarding Isabella, he wouldn't have either. He was very much aware of his commitment to Amber, and he cherished their bond deeply. Amber, you're my everything, he said softly as they both settled into bed. He felt the need to clarify the situation with Isabella. What happened between Isabella and me is in the past. Amber picked up on the significance of those words. So, Isabella was Darren's first love, the same person he had been smitten with a decade ago. Hubby. You sure had questionable taste back in the day? She teased him. Darren was caught off guard. A memory flashed through his mind of Isabella emotionally blackmailing him. Guess you could say that, he admitted. He had always been overshadowed by his impressive older brother, Liam. Back in the day, Liam was a formidable figure, much like a force of nature, always hanging around with Matt and his other friends. While Liam was competent and level-headed, Darren frequently found himself on the receiving end of Thomas's disciplinary actions. In their youth, Darren was even more mischievous than Ryan, a known troublemaker whom most elders dreaded dealing with. During his senior year of high school, he caused such a ruckus that an infuriated Thomas sent him off to a boot camp, hoping to instill some discipline. When the two brothers returned from their military stint, they were even more unrestrained. Their reputation grew as wild young men who brawled on the streets and had a whole gang looking up to them. In the elite circles of Michigan, few dared cross paths with Darren and Liam. After all, with the backing of the influential Fleming family, who would be foolish enough to challenge them? It was this rebellious, headstrong Darren who had crossed paths with Isabella. Isabella was the product of an affair between the head of the Geller family and a woman he'd been involved with. Julie had long despised the women his husband, Lucas, associated with. In his eyes, Isabella's mother was just a fleeting interest of the old man. Yet she believed that bearing his child would secure her place in the Geller dynasty. The Geller family never truly accepted Isabella. Instead, Julie frequently sent messengers to her home, reminding her of her place and heritage. In this oppressive environment, Isabella leaned heavily on her mother. Her greatest desire was to be recognized as a legitimate member of the Geller family and to obtain a status of respect and dignity. To achieve this, she poured herself into her studies and excelled academically. The contrast was stark. On one hand, there was Isabella, the diligent and studious girl. On the other, there was Darren, the young rebel fresh from street escapades. On one occasion, Darren came to Isabella's rescue when she was being harassed. Unaware of his identity, Isabella dismissed him as just another street tough and didn't pay him much heed. To Darren, Isabella was just like any other girl. She didn't captivate him or stir any strong feelings. 
Reflecting on their past, Darren realized that the Isabella from back then seemed different from the one now. Even under the pressure from the Geller family, she had always stood up for herself and her mother. But memories fade with time and Darren struggled to recall many details. Regardless of what he remembered, his feelings for Isabella had waned. Pulling Amber close, Darren's expression softened. Noticing the absence of her usual radiant smile, he teased her. What's with that look? Is it not a good one? She retorted. She nestled into his arms and asserted confidently, Hubby, you're mine. No one can change that. She wasn't bothered about Darren's past relationships. As far as she was concerned, he belonged to her now. Anyone hoping to take him away from her was merely delusional. Darren chuckled, gently stroking her hair in agreement. His laughter subsided and he addressed her seriously. Amber, Isabella downstairs. She was someone I used to be with. Amber was already aware of the woman's identity, but Darren felt the need to clarify things, to ease any lingering discomfort in her heart, and to share his history. With the surname Geller? Amber's eyebrows rose in surprise, thinking about the rumors she had heard. Yes, she's the daughter of the Geller family, he confirmed. An illegitimate daughter? Amber ventured a guess. He simply replied, yes. The Gellers are bad news, she spat out with contempt. Her past run-ins with the Geller family left her with deep-seated resentment. Not a single one of them is decent. Whether it was Shannon, Dylan, or Julie, none of them sat right with her. Now, with Isabella in the mix, it added to her agitation. On her and Darren's wedding night, Isabella had chosen to intervene. The audacity of it infuriated Amber. Seeing Amber's vexation, Darren was unfazed. Instead, he flashed her a reassuring smile. Amber, promise me you won't stay mad for long. I was aware of Isabella's return, but I didn't expect her to show up at our gate, he added. Amber studied his face, deep in thought. The fact that Darren knew of Isabella's return, yet didn't call off their wedding plans, made it clear to her that Isabella was no threat. Amber, Darren began, wanting to explain further, but a yawn interrupted him. I'm exhausted, Amber murmured. Her eyes were fluttering shut. Let's sleep on it. We can talk about all of this tomorrow. Isabella's intrusion had taken a toll on both of their spirits. Whether Amber heard the whole story about Isabella or not, she trusted Darren completely. Watching her drift off to sleep, Darren's lips curled into a soft smile. He held her close and let sleep take over. They shared an unspoken understanding. Amber never pressed Darren about his history with Isabella, and while Darren was prepared to share, she decided to wait. If she ever wanted to know, she would ask. If not, that chapter of his life would simply fade into the background.